I wanted to make the largest LEGO airport on YouTube, complete with the most detailed airfield that anyone has ever tried to build. And I'm finally starting to feel like I did as the footprint of this behemoth is 12 feet by eight feet. And this is still not finished because I intend on putting in a hangar and the lead-in lights for the runway. I started building this over four years ago when my build studio was still in the basement of my last house. The airport terminal itself is modeled after the north terminal at Detroit Metropolitan Airport. And I even used the headings of one of the runways and the adjacent taxiway alpha, but that is where the similarities end. The runway that this is modeled after is two miles in length. My runway is only 8,000 feet which can be determined by looking at the distance remainder signs on the side of the airfield. To help with the realism, I even created nav aids. These particular nav aids are VASIs, and with VASIs, it's red over white, you're all right, white over red, you're dead. I placed wigwags, or RGLs is the correct term, at every runway stop bar. I also did the runway designation markings, and even included the signs. Yellow letters on a back background tell you where you're at. White letters on a red background tell you it's a mandatory hold. And black letters on a yellow background tell you where you're going. I made sure to include all the paint markings for where the planes actually meet up to the jetway and where the equipment parks against the building. The entire ramp has been tiled for a zipper road so that way the airport service equipment has a place to drive. I even tiled in the markings to show that this is the movement area and non-movement area of the airport ramp. The entire airfield is built in a modular fashion on 48 by 48 base plates. To show you what I mean by modular, I can physically pull this right apart, unplug the section, and take it over to my build table to work on it, which I'm gonna have to do after I make this video because I put the wrong resistor on these two LEDs. And now that we've had a very thorough look at this entire airport with the lights on, I'm wondering if we can get clearance to look at this airport with the lights off. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? To me, no build is ever finished until it's completely illuminated, and I still need to illuminate both my airplanes and the field equipment that's on the ramp. Starting with the taxiway edge lights, they all had to be blue. To keep it simple, I kept the runway edge light coloring accurate only from the four approach in, with the exception of not installing TDZs. To explain how the lighting works for landings, when pilots are approaching the runway, you start with four green LEDs on either side, followed by white centerline lights and white edge lights. The last 3,000 feet of the runway is the most important. At 3,000 feet, the edge lights turn yellow. At 2,000 feet, the center lines turn red and white. At 1,000 feet, the center lines and the end lights are all solid red. The entire building is fully illuminated and it does also have a full interior. Each gate has several rows of seats where passengers can sit and wait for their plane to board. There's even snack areas and vending machines down the hall of the main corridor. And every single seating area inside of the airport has a corresponding gate on the exterior of the building as well. And just like the actual North Terminal, I do have a departures and arrivals area. And great cell phone reception. Pedestrian crossing will be made permanent to the parking garage once I finish getting that illuminated also. Hopefully over the course of the next two to three weeks, I will be getting a lot more done and I will do another update video about this amazing airport. And while you're waiting on this massive build to be completed, I highly recommend checking out this six foot tall Avengers Tower I did and even won a couple awards for.